Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the most important character a Muslim should have is called Al-Haya. Al-Haya. The word Al-Haya is translated into many meanings in English. It's translated as bashfulness, shyness, shame, modesty, humility, and more. But none of those words give the true meaning of the word al-haya. There is no English word that can define al-haya. Al Nothing. Al-haya is a bad and uneasy feeling that you feel in your heart. And it's coupled with embarrassment. When somebody does a sin, why? Because they value themselves. They respect themselves. They feel that they are an honored creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So me, do something like that? No way. No way. I'm so honored by Allah. I'm so respected. I will never humiliate myself and do something like that. That's al-haya. So it's a something coming from strength, not weakness. It's when you're a strong person, and you respect yourself, then you refuse to humiliate yourself. So to me, al-haya is more of a self-honor. And the word al-haya is coming from the Arabic word al-haya. Al-haya which means life. Why it's coming from that word? Because when a person, his heart is alive, he will never commit sin. He has haya. Everything in his heart is going to tell him, don't do that. You're better than this. Are you going to let people laugh at you? Are you going to stand humiliated in front of other people? No way. But when your heart is dead, committing a sin or not committing a sin doesn't make any difference. You don't feel any embarrassment. You don't feel any self-respect. You don't feel yourself as a valuable creation. You don't. So it doesn't matter. And why you should value yourself and consider yourself something valuable, honorable, and respect yourself. Because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ And we have honored the children of Adam. So every one of us, Allah honored. So how do you humiliate yourself? How does it work? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ So when I have fashioned him, he's talking about Adam, our father. So when I have fashioned him completely and breathed into him of my spirit, then fall down prostrating yourselves unto him. So we, as a creation of Allah, we have three things that are unique to us. We were created by Allah with his hands. And every one of us, we have a breath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other creation has the breath of Allah. And in addition, we are the only creation that Allah ordered all the angels to do sujood, to, to prostrate in front of you, out of respect. So if you're so respected and so valuable, how can you do haram? How can you accept to do the wrong things and humiliate yourself? You have haya, and if you have haya, you will never accept that. And people who have haya, they can't stand to be humiliated on, in front of themselves. They can't stand to be humiliated in front of people. Why somebody will catch me and embarrass me in front of everybody? They can't stand to be humiliated in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Because you have haya inside, you can't accept it. And the Prophet والسلام, tells us in many hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has haya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has haya. In one of the hadith, he says, indeed Allah is haya, he has haya. Generous, when a man raises his hands to him, to return them to him empty. Allah has haya. You raised your hand, Ya Allah, I need this. Ya Allah, help me with that. And Allah, because of his haya and because he's generous, there is no way he's going to return your hand empty. He may not give you what you're asking for, but he's going to give you something better. 
Because maybe what you're asking for is harmful for you and you don't know. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So he may not give you what you're asking for, but he will never return your hand empty. Because he has haya. And all prophets, they have one characteristic they all have is haya. All of them. Our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Isa alayhi salam, Musa, Ibrahim, Adam, all of them, they have haya. And that's why they don't commit sin. Because they have haya in standing in front of Allah on the day of judgment and being asked, why did you do that? And the Prophet والسلام, tells us many hadith about the importance of haya. How we as Muslim must have haya. He's saying, one of the hadith is saying, every religion has a distinct characteristic. Something very, when you remember that religion, you remember that character. And the distinct characteristic of Islam is haya. The self-respect, the self-honor, the refuse to do anything haram so you don't get humiliated. And then in another hadith, he said, haya and faith, iman, are paired together. They are hand in hand, they're together. If one of them is removed, the other is removed as well. So they go together. So to me, if somebody tells you, you know, I pray all day, I fast all day, I give, you know, I, I, I give a charity, I do all of those things, and he doesn't have haya, he commits sins, then all of that doesn't matter. Because everything that he's doing, if it doesn't touch his heart, He's not sincere if it doesn't touch his heart and make him a better Muslim and make him have haya, then he's doing it for something else to impress people, whatever you know, maybe it's gonna get him uh, a good relationship with some important person, whatever he's doing it for something else, but not sincere in his doing. In another hadith, the Prophet Ali says, Iman, faith, has more than 70 branches. The highest is the statement of La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. That's the highest of the 70 some odd branches of Islam, of Iman. And the lowest is the removal or harm, of harmful object from the road. That's the lowest thing. You see something, you remove it from the road. And Haya is a branch of Iman, of faith. What's interesting about that hadith is that he did not mention any of the other branches. That means all the other branches are less important than this. In other words, if you have haya, it's the key to all the other branches. If you have haya, you're not going to lie. If you have haya, you're not going to cheat. If you have haya, you're not going to steal. If you have haya, you're not going to mistreat your parents. If you have haya, you're not going to mistreat your children, your spouse. But it all starts with having haya in your heart. And if you don't have the haya, the other 60 or 70 odd branches are not going to happen. They're going to fall. And the Prophet والسلام, in another hadith, he's telling us a key how to survive in this world. He's saying, if you do not feel haya, you don't feel discomfort, you don't feel embarrassment, then do whatever you, will, you like. Do whatever you like. So he's telling us, that the haya in our heart is a gate. Whenever you're going to do anything, run it by this gate. If the gate stops it and says, don't go, then don't do it. But if the gate says nothing, then it's fine. Then it's nothing wrong with it. As long as your haya tells you it's fine, then it's fine. So if there is nothing that you feel embarrassed or ashamed of doing, then do it. And we can see that when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he sent Abu Ubaidah Jarrah radiallahu anhu, he sent him to open Jerusalem. And Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah Jarrah opened Jerusalem, but the people before he opened it and conquered it, they told him, we would like to surrender and no fight. And Islam always look for peace. So he said, fine, we're not gonna go invade you or anything. They said, but we have one condition. He said, what is that condition? They said, we are going to give the keys to the city only to Sayyidina Umar. Nobody else. Only Sayyidina Umar. So he sent a messenger to Sayyidina Umar. And Sayyidina Umar said, fine, I'll come. 
So Sayyidina Umar took off from Medina to Jerusalem. And he took with him only his servant and one camel. One camel. On the road, they were taking turns riding the camel. A part, Sayyidina Umar riding, and the servant walking. Another part, the servant riding, and Sayyidina Umar walking. Until they came to the outside of Jerusalem, the city. And that was the turn of the servant. And he was riding on the camel. And they're going to go in the city. So the servant said to Sayyidina Umar, Take my turn, I'm giving it to you. We're going to go meet the, the, the rulers and all the important people in Jerusalem. So ride on the camel. So Sayyidina Umar, he ran it by his heart. Does he feel ashamed? Does he feel embarrassed? He has haya. So he ran it. He said, no, nothing wrong. So he said to, to him, I'm not going to be unjust. The honor of Islam is enough, is, is enough for all of us. And then he kept going. To make things worse, they passed by a muddy area. And Sayyidina Umar took off his shoes and put them under his arm. So now, at the gates of Jerusalem, all the big priests, all the rulers in their fancy clothes, standing waiting for Umar, the ruler of the Muslim nation. And Umar is coming with his shoes under his arm and his servant riding the camel. That's what Islam is. If you don't have haya, do whatever it is. Don't worry about people. Omar was not trying to impress people. He was trying to, to please Allah. That's what he was trying to do. He doesn't care about all those important people waiting with their fancy clothes and jewels and all of that. They don't mean anything to him. So that's how we should be as Muslim. Be like Sayyidina Omar. The Prophet ﷺ passed by a man who was warning his brother regarding Haya. He was telling him, you have too much haya. You're too much of a decent person. And I'm afraid it will harm you. And this is kind of interesting. If you think about it, this hadith can apply to the 21st century. I heard it many times from people telling, we live in the 21st century. You should cheat. You should lie. This is business. This is America. Do this. Do that. And I'll answer them what the Prophet ﷺ told that man. He said to him, leave him. For haya is a part of faith. So if you don't have haya, your iman is not complete. Something wrong with your iman. Some people who commit all those sins, they do it. Why? Because they have low self-esteem. They don't have haya. They don't respect themselves. They don't mind humiliating themselves in front of people and all of that. If you think about it, the person who is a drunk, what do they do? They don't have haya. They have no problem being humiliated in front of other people. No problem. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Many times, executives from top corporation, they get drunk and people laugh at them. And they throw up. And they fall on the ground. And all of that. Executives, they don't have haya. They don't feel anything. They get humiliated. What's the big deal? But as a Muslim, you have haya. You will never accept to be humiliated. Never. Because you have haya. Many years ago, I remember there was an ad in magazines. And it was posters as well on walls and I've seen it on bus stops. The ad says, be a man, try beer. That's what the ad was saying. So those people are saying that to be a man, you have to humiliate yourself. That's the only way. You cannot be a man without humiliating yourself. In my opinion, they should have changed that ad and say, humiliate yourself, try beer. But as a Muslim, we have haya. No way we we'll humiliate ourselves. A liar, he doesn't have haya. So he gets humiliated when he gets caught. And he starts to say, oh, I didn't mean that, I'm sorry, and all of that. And then, you know, people start to give him bad words and he can't say anything. A Muslim has haya. Why put yourself in that situation? Why? You have haya. You're a Muslim. I'll never put myself in that situation, being humiliated by somebody. Lie and get caught. Same thing. A person who backbites his friends. And then all of a sudden their friend hears that thing and they confront that person. And then that person, from being a respectable person to a low person, humiliated person. 
oh, I didn't mean that, oh, you misunderstood, uh, that's not what I said, no, but probably they told you something. Why? Why you humiliate yourself? You have haya as a Muslim. There is no way you can put yourself in that situation. And there are two different types of haya. Good haya and bad haya. The good haya is to be uncomfortable, embarrassed, to commit a sin or a thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger told us not to do. That's the good haya. Me lie? No way. Me steal? No way. Me commit adultery? No way. That's good haya. And that's f something recommended to every Muslim. Then there is the bad haya. The bad haya is feel uncomfortable, embarrassed to do a thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger والسلام, have ordered us to do. Then you feel embarrassed. In the next couple of months, you're going to hear about all those Christmas parties. And some people go to the party and then the bus will hand them a glass of champagne. Oh, and they take it. I, I felt embarrassed. I felt, you know, everybody was looking at me. I felt, you know, I, I, I should do it. My boss will get mad. He's the vice president. You know, he's so important. You didn't have haya from Allah, but you had haya from people. What a shame. How can you humiliate yourself on the day of judgment, stand in front of Allah and tell him, Oh Allah, I was afraid of my boss more than I was afraid of you. I didn't have haya from you, but I had haya from my boss. So we have to have haya and not have haya from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we get people lose their haya? There is three ways that people lose their haya. The first one is following Satan, Shaitan. That's the first way to lose our haya. And we know that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. He said, قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَكَ هَذَا الَّذِي كَرَّمْتَ عَلَيَّ لَإِنْ أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَأَحْتَنِكَنَّ ذُرِّيَّتَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا This is Iblis talking, the leader of the shaitan. He said, Do you see this one whom you have honored above me? If you delay me until the day of resurrection, will surely seize and mislead his offspring, offspring except a few. So what Iblis is committing, he's saying, I'm going to make everyone of the people lose their haya and follow me except few people in the masjid alhamdulillah and he used a very humiliating word about the people who follow him very humiliating he said La ahtanikanna. Ahtanikanna, what does it mean it means he's gonna put a rope in our mouth and pull us behind him like a cow or like a donkey and pull us and we will follow him we're going to lose our haya. So he tells us, oh, you know, the fashion now is to walk half naked. We'll walk half naked. The fashion now is to do this. Oh, we'll do it. Oh, you know, to succeed in business, you have to cheat, you have to lie. We'll do it. He's pulling us like an animal behind him with a rope. That's what he's using the word. He's, he's thinking very little of the people who are following him. But then he said, except a few, the people who are in the masjid, the people who follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people who have haya and have respect for themselves. The second way we people lose our haya is following our desires. A lot of people let their desire take over their heart instead of letting the haya. So they, the desire start to push their haya out. Oh, you know, I like this girl. I like that, you know, that job. I want to get that promotion, all of that. So your desire keep pushing your haya out, out, out until it takes over and you don't have any haya left. And that's what Allah, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us the months of Ramadan because He helped us in the months of Ramadan to control our desires. We don't drink, we don't eat, we don't have intimate relation with our spouses. We control our desires. So that help us to control our desire and let haya take over our heart again. And the third way that we can lose our haya is friends, bad friends. They start to tell you, you know, be a man, why don't you try marijuana? 
Oh, it's wrong, it's haram. Come on, all of us, you know, and they start to make fun of you. Oh, look at that kid, you know, still kid and all of that. And then you want to impress your friend. So you let the haya go out of your heart and you start to follow your friends. And trust me, those are not your friends. Those are your enemies. They are not your friends. Because every one of them will get you to hellfire faster than you can think. So they are not your friends. That's the third way to lose our haya. We must have haya in everything that we do. We must have haya in what we watch. We must have haya in what we say. We, have must, we must have haya in how we treat each other. We must have haya in the friends we choose. We must have haya in the places we go. That's what we are as a Muslim. We have to have haya in everything that we do. The highest level of haya is not from yourself. It's not from people. Because some people, you know, they're embarrassed, so they don't do something because of people. But the highest level of haya is to have haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never want to be, you say to yourself, am I going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and being humiliated and being guilty? No way. No way. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stand in front of Allah and billions and billions of His creation, of His people, watching and listening to the sins I committed. No way, not me. I have haya, no way. And we know that we are human beings. We will commit sins. We are going to do mistakes. But because we have haya, when we do them, we ask Allah for forgiveness quickly. We don't wait. We feel sorry that we did something wrong. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, I made a mistake. And you are the forgiver. Forgive me. And we don't go and talk about it. You don't go and brag about the sin that you committed. You know, this guy, I was able to cheat him and I got that deal from him. I took that thing from him. Don't. Have haya. Because if you brag about it, Allah will not accept your, your repentance. You have to repent and have haya, not spread it. And we know that the highest level of haya is Allah from a story that we heard as well. Sayyidina Umar, one of the things that he was known for is that always at night when he was the ruler of the Muslim Ummah, he goes out and walk around and see what's going on. He doesn't sit in his office and wait for everybody to come and tell him what's going on and they mislead him. No, he go firsthand and find out what's going on. So one night he was walking around, he found a house far from the city. There was a light inside. He walked to that house and stood there and listened. There was a woman, two women talking to each other, a, a mother and a daughter, and they were seller of milk. So the mother was telling her daughter, add water to the milk so it becomes more and we can make more money. So the daughter said to her, didn't Sayyidina Umar order us not to cheat and add anything to the milk or cheat in general? She said to her, but who cares about Omar? How he's going to know? Let's do it. Don't worry about it. So the daughter told her, if Omar doesn't see us, Allah sees us. The daughter had haya. She taught her mother to have haya. The daughter was the teacher, not the mother was the teacher. She told her, have haya. Allah is watching us. Who cares about Omar? Allah is watching us. That's what we have to do as Muslims. Remember Allah in all our action. And that's one of the problems that our Muslim nation is facing. The Muslim nation, haya is gone. I didn't hear even in any khutbah somebody talking about haya. It's not something we talk about it anymore. It's gone. That's why you see Muslim, you go to Muslim nation, they are filling the, the mosques. But they go out, they cheat, they steal, they lie, they, all of that. They are killing each other. Muslim killing each other. Where is the haya? How you're going to stand in front of Allah and tell him, I killed my brother Muslim all because of politics. How can you do that? Brothers and sisters, train yourself to have haya. Respect your, yourself and teach your children to have haya. The Prophet ﷺ said, haya does not bring anything except good. So if you have haya, it's going to bring you everything that's good.